In this video, we're going to have a look at lossy versus lossless compression and how those principles can be applied to images, audio, and video. To compress a file means to reduce the amount of data that it takes up on a storage medium. So, for example, to reduce the amount of hard drive space an image takes up. Let's say, for example, we've got this picture here. This picture is what's called a raw image. It's exactly as it's come from the camera. CR2 is the uh, file type that is used in some Canon cameras. RAW means that it's not had any sort of compression applied to it. This image is very, very large. If we wanted to send this to someone in an email, or if we wanted to store this on a hard drive, it would take up a bit of space on it. More space than these ones here. This one here is a PNG. PNGs use what is called lossless compression. JPEGs, which is here, uses lossy compression. The difference is that with lossless compression, we get a smaller file size, and yet we don't lose any of the quality. What that means is that none of the data that was in the original one has been lost permanently to make this file. However, when we compress something to a JPEG, we do lose some of the quality, and we can't get that quality back. When we open a JPEG, all of the quality that came from the original raw file has been lost forever. We can't get it back. With a PNG, as soon as we open the file, even though it's much smaller than the original raw file, when we open the file, all of the original quality is still there. It's the equivalent of packing a suitcase to go on holiday. If you pack or fold all of your clothes really, really nicely and neatly, and you manage to squeeze them into the suitcase, right, that is lossless compression. When you unfold your clothes, they're exactly the same as they were before you folded them. The equivalent of the lossy compression using that analogy is just cutting parts of your clothes off and throwing them in the bin. So cutting one leg off your trousers, cutting your t-shirt in half. When you get on holiday and open your suitcase, you can't just open the clothes and get them back to the original form because you've destroyed them. That's the same principle that applied here. So when we're looking at image compression, the different methods that we can use are, we can reduce the resolution, firstly. This is a really simple thing to do. We can show you how we do it by, if we go to edit this in paint, and we go to resize, then we simply go to pixels, and we reduce that number there. Remember, the pixels are the little squares that make up the picture. So if I change that to 200, you'll see that when I zoom in now, it's extremely blocky. And that's because instead of it being made up of lots and lots and lots of little squares, it's made up of not as many squares. So here on these headlights, whereas it used to be probably made up of, I don't know, 5,000 squares, now it's made up of about 30 squares. And we've lost some of the quality. Now, if I was to save this file and send it to someone else, when they open it up, they wouldn't be able to get back the original data because it's been lost forever. That's why lossless compression is a lot better to use but however we can't reduce the data we can't reduce the size as much with lossless compression that we can with lossy i could theoretically reduce this down to one bit by just making everything one massive pixel we couldn't do that with lossless compression we can't change every image into one bit another method that we can use is we can reduce the color depth that means that the potential colors that are in the image so with this picture here, which is made up of, well, it's a JPEG, so it's made up of 16.7 million colors, or the potential of 16.7 million colors. If I reduce that down, I can change it to 256 colors, 512 colors, and it's a smaller image. But obviously, some of the colors would be blended together because we wouldn't have all of the different tones on the car, for example. So reducing color depth means using less colors. We can also copy some similar pixels. What that means is, we have a look at the pixels here, Oops. and where we've got slightly different areas of blue, one compression method I can use, which is often combined with other compression methods, is, whereas this blue is slightly different to this blue, we, have, we take one pixel, we have a look at the pixels around it, and if they're very similar, we just copy the same data over. And if you do it on a very small scale, then you can't really tell that much with the human eye. 
If we do it on a large scale, then it's much easier to tell. So we can simply copy the data over from one pixel to lots of other pixels, which is some kind of sometimes called archetyping. Quantization is where we use complex mathematics to take a large data set and reduce it down into a smaller data set. For the GCSE and the IGCSE, you don't need to know the specifics of this. Huffman coding is a very, very popular lossless compression method. Okay, How it works is we take the extremely popular and common uh, pieces of data and we assign them to small little identifiers. It's kind of like a dictionary. So for example, if you were writing a letter to someone and you use the and, the word and lots and lots and lots of times, then you might assign the word and to the number one. Okay. And then every time you want to say and, you just put a one and you would save two letters every time. It's a very, that's a very, very, very simplified explanation. But it's, as I said, with quantization, we don't need to know the specifics of that here. RLE is called run length encoding. How it works is if we represent all of our data as, let's say, for example, letters. Let's say all of our data is rep represented in hexadecimal. We've got AAFFF. Uh, five 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 L L L. Oops, there's no L's obviously. Uh, e E E E two two two. Right. Let's say that we've got this string of data here. Instead of having all of these A's, we just put four A. Instead of having all of these F's here, we just put I think there's five there. We just put five F, and so on. Okay. Uh, the computer would obviously recognise the difference between this five and these fives here but we cut down the amount of data by just saying in when we've got repeated letters or numbers how many of that number or letter there are instead of just writing them in a list okay that is obviously a lossless compression exactly the same as Huffman coding is because if I was to see let's say if I was to see this I would be able to rebuild this because I would know that that must have meant there were four A's and that must have meant there were five F's. Moving on to video compression, we can use pretty much the same things that we use here because obviously video effectively is lots of images one after the other in frames. However, the two most common methods that we can use is we can reduce the video resolution which works the same as with an image. We just get a lot of pixels instead of not many pixels. And then we can reduce the frame rate. To reduce the frame rate means, let's say, for example, you've got a video that runs at 30 frames per second. It means that every second there are 30 different pictures. It's like flipping a little flip book that you've made. If you were to flip 30 pages in a second, it would look a lot smoother than if you were to flip three pages a second. Also, both of these are lossy compressions because if we get rid of frames, then we can't get them back because we haven't stored them anywhere. We've just deleted them. The rest of the video compression methods are the lossless compressions methods that we have here as well. We can also apply to video. One other common method we can use is, let's say we have this video here of Paul Gilbert playing an upright bass. If we play this video, we can see that this part changes. However, this part here at the background doesn't change. So what we can do is instead of repeating the data for this background, we can just, or sorry, instead of getting different data every time and taking a reading of the data from this background, we can just repeat it. So it's the effect, effectively, it's the same as cutting this part out on paper and putting it on a background that looks like this. We'd have to change the paper every time he moves because he's, he looks slightly different and things are in a different position, but the background stays the same, so we just have one piece of paper there. That is a popular compression method that is used with other compression methods. A lot of these compression methods are combined with other ones rather than just used on their own. With audio, we have reducing the bit depth, the bit rate, and using also removing the less audible frequencies. What I mean by bit depth is let's have a look at an example of a wave. So this here is an example of a wave. A wave is, as you probably know, is analog. However, we need to represent a wave when it goes into a computer digitally. So we can't represent a wave like this. 
because this is a continuous form. We can't have a continuous form like this in a computer because we can only use zeros and ones. So what we do is we take a reading every so often of the audio and we put it into the computer. If we take a reading every, let's say, millisecond, let's say these are milliseconds, then we would have a lot of data because each of these would be represented by, let's say each one of these is represented by uh, 10 bytes. Okay? So if each of these is represented by 10 bytes and we take a reading or what's called a sample every millisecond, we're going to have a lot of bytes. So what we can do is we can cut down the amount of times that we take that sample. Like this. Not that one, sorry, that is. So this is what it would look like if we take it every millisecond. You can see that it looks very, very similar. If we look at this green line, the green line, which is the computer one, looks very similar to the black line. If we take a reading every three milliseconds, we start to lose a little bit of quality, but we also lose the amount of data that we're taking up. Because instead of having to save 10 bytes there, 10 bytes there, 10 bytes there, I've just put 10, 10, 10, 10. However, we've lost a little bit of quality because we missed out on this bit here. And then as we keep going down the road of that principle, every four, we lose a lot of quality as well. These things here are called samples. Okay, let me just make that bigger. So that is called a sample. Now, two ways that we reduce the file size, which are common, are we reduce the sample rate, which is what we've done here, so the rate at which we sample the audio. And we can also reduce the size of the sample, which is called the sample depth. Okay? So, instead of reading this with 10 bytes, we might read it with one byte or two bytes. Some of the frequencies will be lost because we're not using as much data. However, that might not be as important. I'll get onto why in a minute. Another thing that we can do is, oh sorry, it's similar and instead of using the word sample depth, what we sometimes use is we use the term bit rate. And the bit rate means the amount of bits per second that are in the audio. That combines sample rate and um, the depth or the size of each sample. So if you see, for example, some audio that is 256 kbps, then that means that there are 256 kilobytes for every second of music. If I reduce that to 128, obviously it's going to be half of the quality, but it's going to be half of the size as well. Uh, the quality or the way that we do that comes from reducing the sample rate and the bit depth, sample rate, uh, sorry, the, the uh, sample depth. Sample rate is the how often it's sampled, and the sample depth is how many bits are assigned to each one of these little readings. One good thing about audio is that humans can't hear audio that great. So if you start to reduce some of the very, very high frequencies and the very, very low frequencies, so we get rid of uh, this little bit here. Let's say we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to get rid of that. We might not actually notice the difference because we don't have the perception in terms of human hearing to hear things that are extremely high and hear things that are extremely low. So what MP3 uses is it takes advantage of that sort of flaw in human hearing to reduce the size of the files by taking out some of the things we might not hear already. So just to recap, We've got lossy and lossless compression. Lossy compression means we lose data forever. Lossless means we don't. We can get it back every time we open the file. In an image, we can reduce the resolution and color depth. We can copy, copy sorry, some of the similar pixels. We can use the mathematical principle of quantization. We can use Huffman coding, which is kind of like a dictionary of uh, popular uh, bits of data. And we can use run length encoding, which is the example here. For video compression, we can reduce the video resolution, the frame rate, and we can also, as I explained earlier, copy over similar parts of the frame. For audio compression, we can reduce the bit depth, we can reduce the uh, bit rate, so the bit depth is the size of each sample, the bit rate is how often the, uh, sorry, the bit rate is how many seconds, how many bits, bytes there are per second. Um, and within that, we can reduce the sample rate. So I'll 
add that in there. So we can reduce... Oops, that's not how you spell reduce. Reduce the sample rate, which is how often we take a digital reading of the audio, and we can remove less audible frequencies uh, that humans can't hear anyway. And that is all you need to know for iGCSE or any GCSE that I've seen on lossy and lossless compression of audio, video, and uh, image.